So let me remind you um, <clears throat> a little bit about cross product. The cross product between unit vectors is defined this way. X cross Y gives you Z. Does that work? Let's see, if you have a right-handed coordinate system. Uh, let's see, X crossed into Y gives you Z. That works. And we can make a cyclic permutation, so that means Shove y to the left, shove z to the left, shove x to the left, and wrap it around and come over there. That's a cyclic permutation, and that also is true, and we get one more, and if we did a fourth one, we'd end up right back with red at the start. But it's possible to screw this up, right? So we could have y cross x, and that works out to be negative z. Are you believers? Okay, so y crossed into x so if I have y and then I cross that into x that's going to point my thumb down so that's opposite to z so that's why I need a negative sign there, and then if I permute cyclically this, this uh, backwards one, I can get the other three. So z cross y, that's the backwards order, it should be y cross z, which is over there. So this one gives me negative x. So an important property of the cross product is that it's not commutative. Okay? Exchanging the order gives you a minus sign. A cross B is minus B cross A. Same general direction, but in the opposite sense for the cross product. Okay? And the vectors A and B in general define a plane. And the direction of the cross product vector is perpendicular to that plane. So it's actually very useful for figuring out planes. Not like Boeing. So if I write this thing out in gory detail, vector A has components A sub X in the X direction, A sub Y in the Y direction, and A sub Z in the Z direction, and so forth. Then using this these six relations, I would get these six terms. And I think the easy way to think about this is the unit vector comes first, then vector A, then vector B, and if X, Y, Z, that's a cyclic permutation, so that one comes in with a plus sign. X, Z, Y, that one's backwards, so that one's going to come in with a negative sign. And you can play that game all the way along. You can also use a determinant to represent that same junk. Have you guys done determinants? Yeah, they're kind of annoying, yeah. So I would, I would stick with these. These are usually faster. Just if, if you've got a cyclic permutation of the three components, then you get a plus sign. And if you have anti-cyclic, you get a negative sign. This way, you always end up having to write out everything and remember the rule about the awkward middle child. Uh, the awkward middle child, whereas the, I don't have to remember nothing. <laughs> Just cyclic versus anti-cyclic. Uh, 